Sophia, I'm so glad you came to help with the final preparations for Vicky's surprise birthday party. I wouldn't miss this for anything, Granny. It's going to be so cool. And she's going to love it. We are almost done. For now, we just need to calculate the right amount of food and drinks. Mm, that's right. We have 60 people on the guest list. Yes, and everyone has confirmed their presence. Let's get started. So we're going to have a hot dog stand, aren't we? Yes, but I need to give the estimated number of hot dogs to the person in charge of the stand. We're going to have various savory snack options. So I'll consider two hot dogs per person. Great! If we calculate that each person will eat two hot dogs, and we know we invited 60 people, we don't need to add two by two up to 60. We just need to multiply the number of people by the number of hot dogs each person will eat. That way, we'll find out how many hot dogs we need in total. Exactly, Sophia! So we do 60 multiplied by 2 or 60 times 2. Which equals 120. That's the total number of hot dogs we need to order. And if we do 2 times 60, it's the same thing, right? Yes, Sophia. In multiplication, the order of the factors doesn't change the product. That is, the result. Yes, Granny. Now the next item on the list is... The wonderful chicken croquettes. Yummy! I love them! Should we consider six per person? I was thinking the exact same quantity. Following the same logic... We do 60 times six. That equals 360. And we'll consider the same number of cheese puffs, right? Yes, yes, I've already written it down here. We'll also order 360 cheese puffs. Oh, if only the chicken croquettes were giant, then each person would only eat one. <laughs> that way we wouldn't need to do the math. Because any number times one is always itself. Oh, I love it. My little Sophia is rocking math. That's right, dear. The number one is the multiplicative identity element. You explained that property perfectly. Now let's see. Those are the 300 spheres that I've prepared. So can you tell me how many spheres we have per guest? Hmm, let me think. Here we have the inverse logic. We know the total number of spheres and the total number of guests. So we want to know how many spheres each guest can have. When we know the total and want to find out the number that represents just part of that total, we do a division. That means separating the elements into smaller, equal groups. You got it right again, Sophia! Doing 300! which is the number of spheres divided by the number of guests. Which is 60, we get five spheres per guest. In division, we can't swap the terms like in multiplication, right? No, we can't. If we swap the order, the result changes completely. True, it really does change. If we reversed it, we'd have 60 snacks to divide among 300 guests. That wouldn't work. So, no swapping the terms in division. Or it will be very confusing. Oh, Granny, speaking of confusion, we forgot the soda. No, we didn't. It's on this other list. That's right. Here it is. We have 40 bottles of soda. Usually, each bottle fills nine cups. So, how many cups will 40 bottles fill? Let's take it slowly because we have two calculations to do here. If we consider nine servings per bottle, how many cups will 40 bottles fill? It's easy. When we know the number that represents one part of a total and want to find out the total that all parts together represent, we do multiplication. We know that with one bottle, we fill nine cups. 
That's one part of the 40 bottles we have. So 40 bottles times 9 cups equals 360 cups. Now the second part of the calculation. I know the total number of cups of soda we have, and I also know the number of guests. How do I figure out how many cups each guest can have? When you explain it like that, it gets easier. We divide the total number of cups by the number of guests. 360 divided by 60. That gives us six cups per person. That's perfect. But I bet you would want to drink all the soda, wouldn't you? And in that case, it would be a division by one. <laughs> Oh, and what's interesting is, in a division, the number one is also the identity element. Yes, that is so true. If I do 360 divided by one, the result is still 360. Good job, Sophia. And that applies to any number we divide by one. And do you think Vicky will like the party? Oh, she's going to love it. It's going to be an amazing party. With lots of good food, music to dance to, cake, sweets. Oh no! We still need to order the cake and decide on the sweets! Do you really think I'd forget that? Everything's already set aside in the fridge. Hey! Come and take a look at this cake!